We're selling black holes. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, this is um, this is cool. This is a uh, very high contrast touch screen. Just to show you, this is a coin. So, because uh, this could be any size. This could be. I know. It's like you can't tell. Be Jupiter size. We have a demo that I can also show. Yeah. So, um, it's around touch screen. Yeah. So if you go to the overhead, I can show this really fast. So this is a um, show. Uh, round touch screen with a 240 by 240 capacitive touch display. Um, you can also use it with uh, Cutie Pie boards. And I'll say that the Arduino support is a little bit um, funky, like you have to edit a lot of files and stuff. But um, we do have a CircuitPython demo we put in the um, newsletter a few weeks ago. And then I just wrote a quick demo that just um, displays some cute cherries. Oh my God, they don't look very red. Well, they're nice and red in person. Um, when you when you touch these little cherries showed up. Boop, 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 boop. Um so capacitive touch screen over I squared C, SPI two forty by two forty touch screen over the other pins. There's also a micro SD slot here. Real time clock with um you can plug in a battery for optional long term timekeeping. Um on off switch you can uh, turn the whole thing off, back on clear the screen no oh maybe it just turns off the backlight and um so uses like almost all the pins maybe i think like one or two of these pins are available but uh you still have i squared c so you have the stomach qt port here so you can plug it in um only thing i will say is because uh you have to use circuit python it will not work great with the samd21 qt pi but i'm using the rp2040 and i think the esp32s would also be great yeah. um so i recommend to use it with circuit python but uh, it does work quite well, and it's like a nice little all-in-one shao slash cutie pie board. Alrighty, next up. Okay, this is something I built for myself, but I thought maybe other people may also use it. It's um, basically like, these are something called like USB condoms, although this is a little bit different in that you can turn on and off any of the four lines on a USB connection. Um, so you have power, data minus, data plus, and ground. And on one side is a USB-A socket, and the other side is a uh, USB Type-C um, socket. And so you can put this in between um, a connection. So I'll show that on the overhead. And you can also use it for other stuff as well. But like you would plug this side into your computer, and then you can plug you know any device you like onto this side. And then you can decide which connects which connections should go through. So in this case, all of them are on. This is the on side. But like if I don't want the data pins, I just yeah. turn those off. And then if I want to do data monitoring, sorry, I want to do data, but I want to have power monitoring because I'm doing some sort of low power stuff. Um, you see, I turned off the uh, five volt line. I picked these very nice, those nice. pokey uh, dip switches that are also nice and uh, easy to switch. Um, so you can turn off ground, uh, either of the data pins, if you want to disconnect one for some reason, um, or five. So if you want to measure height side, you can do that. Or if you want to measure the low side, um, disconnect ground. And then you have two sides. This, these pins connect to the right side and these pins connect to the left side. Um, in this case, I'm actually testing this USB plug. So I soldered that in because I was like, oh, I want to test, you know, connecting it to either side. And I was just doing some experiments. Now, which is another thing, if you want to just like, oh, have access to the data pins as like a breakout to either USB host or USB client. Um, this will also work. It has the 5.1K resistors. Um, so another thing this could be good for, um, although it's you know not recommended because these are not high current switches, is that if you have something that doesn't have the USB-C um, resistor set, on the device so it's like when you connect to an apple power supply it doesn't provide any power you can put this in the middle and it will pull it'll set the cc lines low with the 5.1k resistor but let the data through so kind of like an all-in-one like usb twiddler i don't know um i think it's pretty useful it's like cool. i said the only downside is these dip switches are only rated for 100 milliamps but like you could probably pull a couple hundred milliamps without too much issue just yeah. you know don't don't do it a lot um don't tell anyone and don't switch it while it's powered so you know you you minimize the uh the arcing while while switching the power lines but um i use this all the time because i'm constantly like doing usb experimentation okay um 
star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, and our community, and our customers, our team, everybody who makes things go is? UART HID Converter. Um, oh. I wonder what the code is. So this is a board based on the CH90 through 28, which I saw looking at a different project. And I was like, oh, what is this chip? This chip is kind of neat. Um, if you have, you know, a 70, 20, Could I, uh, what? I think I have, oh, I see. This one. Did you swap yours. one picture? This one right here. Yeah, we'll just click that one. Click, oh, click that. Click don't click that. Don't click that. Okay, thanks. Click the right one. Um, if you have a, a SAMD21 or a SAMD51 or an RP2040 or an ESP32, S2 or S3, you have native USB, which means that the USB port on the board can act like a keyboard or MIDI or a mouse or a disk drive. Um, and a lot of people like to make little keyboard projects where, you know, when you press a button, it sends a key press, like our macro pad project. Um, but the problem is that there's some controllers that don't have native USB, like the original ESP32 or the ESP8266 or the Arduino Uno, the original Arduinos, uh, or like, um, you know, the CH552. There's like just a bunch of chips that don't have, maybe the CH552 does have native USB, but the CH32V003 doesn't, right? So there's some chips that don't have USB that can act like, um, a keyboard. And in those cases, um, we've historically just told people like, oh, just upgrade your chip and use a different chip. But if you really want to use the microcontroller you've got, or maybe another idea is some people have asked, how can I make a Raspberry Pi act like a keyboard? And I'm like, uh, like it's actually really hard because you have to put it into gadget mode. I guess it's very complicated. Um, but if you want a computer or a single board computer or a microcontroller to act like a keyboard, this chip basically does that. It looks when you plug the USB port into a tablet or mobile or laptop or computer or game system, it enumerates as a keyboard. And then on the RX pin at the bottom there, um, you connect to ground and RX and then you send 9,600 baud UART ASCII strings and whatever you type in the ASCII string, like if you type out hello world, the chip will type out hello world. So whatever UART signal is sent into the chip, it pretends like it presses each key. There's also these switches on the left that are mode switches. And one of the modes, if you like flip two of them one way or the other, um, just document in the product page, you can send raw eight byte HID um, key press data, which means that if you want to act like a French or German keyboard, or you want to send um, multiple key presses, or you want to do like control alt delete, you would do it that way because it's not an ASCII string. You, you'd send the raw key press data um, and you can do that by setting a mode. So it's kind of neat because it's a transparent, like you are string in, key press out, and also like a raw data in to more adaptable key press, key release signal. Um, but I like it. It's a little chip. And then um, we also have a little port on the side. Um, maybe go to the first image, 04. Um, it's a JSTSH pin. So if you want to not even solder, you can use a cable. You can go to the overhead really fast. Um, you can use this cable if you want to not even do soldering. I'm trying to make as many projects and products solder free as possible. Um, so people can just like plug in cables and then you can have uh, data on the white wire and then you get five volts out here. And then this is the common ground. And if you're, you do want to solder a little bit, you can change the voltage from five volts to three volts. Um, and like I said, you know, you could have your data coming from a Raspberry Pi or a computer or a microcontroller um, or a Bluetooth module. And now it acts like a keyboard. All right. And we can answer a question for this specific. What key map does it use pretty or is it configurable? Can HAD send ASCII Unicode 2? Um, it can, in the transparent mode, it only sends ASCII visible characters. If you want to send anything else, um, you use the raw mode and you can, you literally are sending the raw key codes. So it's like whatever language, emo, you know, emoji, you can do it. You just have to know like the, you know, the key commands to send it. So it's like alt control, you know, dot backslash X five, two, one or whatever. But yes, you can have it type whenever you like. Yay. Yay.